Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcad. So today I wanted to pick up a topic uh, of back chamfering or 3D back chamfering and uh, ways that you can do that with Bobcad. So to start with, I want to look at uh, our engraving features and you know different ways that you can use them. So let me just get this set up here. All right, so you have in the cam tree, you have uh, two axis, and within two axis under your strategies, you have engraving, right? So with two axis engraving, you can select, um, you can select any two axis geometry like what we have here, and you can compute that, and what that will generate is a center line path. So really, two axis engraving is. Uh, center line tool path that generates a two axis cut or you could also call it a manual tool path if you've drawn exactly where you want a cutter to go you can use uh, two axis engraving for that you could also use profile with no compensation cutting on center line but uh, generally two axis engraving is for engraving um, or a center line path now if you have uh, three axis engraving and you know so in this example over here I, let me just blank out my stock I, I just have a uh, just like an X or whatever so uh, blank that out so in this example here I have a 3d path I have uh, two splines you know and uh, so if you want to do 3d engraving or a 3d center line path then you can go into the cam tree and we call it insert mill three axis wireframe and then you can select the paths that you want to cut and you can um, you know there's roughing and finishing I'm gonna get rid of the roughing and just look at the finishing you know and pick your different tool types and you have all these different tool types that you can pick from and then you can compute that and here you can see that we have a center line path that's generated in three axis so you have two axis engraving is center line for two axis cuts three axis engraving or three axis wireframe is center line for three axis cut and when I mean center line it's not compensating for the cutter it's taking what you have on the screen and it's going to convert it to G code okay so the next topic that we want to look at is a, a tool path pattern okay so I'll set up this job here um, oh, that's fine so I have this shape that I want to cut, so I'm just going to do, um, you know, doesn't matter, profile pocketing. It, the toolpath patterns work with all strategies, so we'll just do, you know, a, a profile finish. I'm not really concerned with that. Okay, so we have a toolpath feature. Now, when you have a toolpath pattern, uh, sometimes called a translation in, in other packages, what you're doing is you say, I generated one of these and now I want to generate more of them. Okay, so I've drawn it run once, I have one toolpath feature for it, so now I want to generate more of them. So you can either have the toolpath pattern be to just the feature or you can have it to be to the whole job tree and uh, it's kind of like subroutines you can have a, a pattern inside of a pattern inside of a pattern just like you can have a sub inside of a sub inside of a sub so in, in order to get into this you just right click uh, I'm gonna do it on the machine setup so it'll be for the whole, all the features that are child uh, I'm gonna go additional functions and add toolpath pattern now we have three different types we have an array we have a translate and and we have a rotate and array you know what that does you can give it uh, spacing number of copies spacing number of copies you know and then that will create an array for you if you come back in here and um, let's say we change this to a rotate so what that's gonna allow us to do is it's gonna allow us to say our origin is gonna be zero and zero and we want uh, uh, two copies at uh, 45 degrees okay so then now that's gonna take this one and it's gonna rotate two copies at 45 degrees um, you also have a, a 3d option a 3d rotate that's where you can pick a center line for it instead of it just being based off of world zero so that can be very useful as well but uh, let's go back and, and look at the other one here that we have which is translate which means after you've generated this one uh, toolpath then you can move it to another location so 
This one's pretty useful as well uh, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, I can move it in X and Y, um, or what I can do is give it a Z depth. And, and these are delta positions. So if I say minus one inch and I want to make three copies, what that's going to do is generate three uh, three patterns or three copies of that toolpath going down in Z. But the other thing that's really nice about this feature too is because this is a delta move, you can have it go down or you can have it go up. So that's very important as we get to this next uh, sample here. And again, uh, this topic is based off of a... Um, uh, you want to do... You, you have... Um, you have a shape that you have cut out, you have a cavity, and you want to do uh, some back chamfering. Now, I just am using a dovetail tool in this example. And again, uh, 3D engraving or, or 3D wireframe, that's a centerline path. So the user is responsible to figure out the offsets and where that path needs to be so that when the tool is following that path, you get the result that you want. Um, using the 3D wireframe and a toolpath pattern, you know, I was able to... Um, you know, come in here and break the edge of uh, the intersection of these two cylinders, okay? So if I uh, just slow down the simulation and I run this through, again, I'm using uh, the toolpath pattern translate and I'm having it go up. This way I can rough the shape out. So the combination of uh, two axis engraving um, or three axis wireframe and toolpath patterns uh, can really allow you to uh, generate paths that the software wouldn't automatically generate. So it gives you a lot of control and depending on the job that you're working on, like this one here, really there's no other option that you have in order to cut this. Uh, so that's that's the way that you would approach a back chamfer. And again, it's a, a three axis um, routine. This is a compound curve here, you know, com coming along in the intersection of these two cylinders. And uh, we want to come in and break that edge and uh, using our wireframe that we generate and our toolpath pattern, we can accomplish that uh, very easily. So if you guys have any comments or uh, feedback, reply back to the thread or the Facebook or YouTube page. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube page, uh, go ahead and do that now. Thank you so much, guys.